Hello everyone, welcome to Link Frequency and I'm Ashwarya Pattap. This video is part of our new series which mainly focuses on Otisar interview questions. Each part includes three Otisar questions along with the answer which significantly enhances your preparations for the upcoming interviews. So without any further delay, let's begin with part 6 video of Otisar interview question series. Well, we are back to screen mode where you can see Otisar interview questions part 6 along with the three questions represented on the screen. Let us quickly jump into our first question which basically states, Why is CAN called a asynchronous protocol? Well, you can answer to this question in the following format. CAN is multi-master linear bus communication. It means every node can initiate and transmit message. There is no control over the communication and can transfer at any given time. To make communication easy and collision free, arbitration logic is implemented. In short, you can say that CAN is called asynchronous because it doesn't rely on centralized clock or explicit timing signals for communication. Nodes on the CAN bus can transmit messages independently of each other and there is no predefined time slot for transmission. So this was all about our first question. Let's quickly jump into our second question which basically states that What is the use of remote frame in CAN protocol? Well, to answer this question, you can go in the following format. A node that requires data from another node on the network can request a transmission by sending the remote frame. Instead of carrying actual data, the container identifier that is CAN ID and a request flag that is RTR indicating that the transmitting node expects the receiving node to send the corresponding data frame in response. A remote frame is same as a data frame without the data field with the RTR bit recessive. The use of remote frames allows for efficient data transmission and reduces bus congestion in the CAN networks. Nodes can request data on demand and only the required data frames are transmitted in response to the remote frame, thus minimizing unnecessary communications and optimizing network performance. This was the short answer for our second question. Let's quickly jump into our third question which basically states, explain bit stuffing in CAN protocol. If the frame has more than 5 consecutive bits of same polarity, then insertion of a bit of opposite polarity after the 5th consecutive bit of same polarity is called as bit stuffing. Bit stuffing helps maintain synchronization between the transmitting and receiving nodes of the communication network, even if the data contains long sequence of identical bits. Overall, you can sum it up as, bit stuffing is a technique used in CAN protocol to ensure that there are enough transitions in the data stream to maintain synchronization between the transmitting and receiving nodes. This is crucial because CAN is a non-differential bus system, meaning it relies on transitions that is changing from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 for synchronization. Without enough transitions, nodes may lose synchronization and misinterpret the data. Let's understand how bit stuffing works in a simple way. When a transmitting node sends a message, it examines the data being transmitted. If there are 5 consecutive bits of same value, that is either all are 0 or all are 1s, the transmitter actually inserts a complementary bit that is nothing but bit of opposite value after the 5th consecutive bit. This is what happens on the transmitter side. Now, let's see what happens on the receiver end. The receiver knows that when it detects 5 consecutive bits of same value followed by a complementary bit, it should ignore the complementary bit and then continue reading the data. An example on how bit stuffing occurs is explained in detail from both the sides that is from the transmitter side and the receiver side on our Otisar playlist. You can definitely watch those videos to comprehend better. To keep it short, only the main points that can be answered in the interview are discussed here. For detailed explanation, you can definitely watch our playlist and get back to us if you have any queries. Well, this was part 6 video of Otisa interview question series. I hope you found the video insightful. For any queries, you can surely comment below in the comment section. Until we meet on our next video, happy learning. Tune yourself to make a difference.